Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television. A reminder of our major stories. Senate summons Minister of State for Petroleum and NNPC GMD to explain a lingering fuel crisis in the country. At least six persons feared dead as deadly explosion rocks market in a village near Medugri, the Bronu state capital. And dozen killed as suicide bomber attacks Shiite center in Kabul, Afghanistan. Islamic State claims responsibility for the incident. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website. It's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. And there's something else you can do. The Channel TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. 14 out of the 46 fleeing inmates in Ikota Ekbene prison in Akwaibom state have been rearrested. The spokesperson of the prison, Ogwaje Ogwaje, says the prisoners had attacked prison kitchen staff before making their escape via the rear entrance on Wednesday night. Four inmates were shot dead in the process, while 18 others are still at large. The controller of prisons in Akwaibom state, Alex Odita, has ordered that an investigation be carried out to get to the root of the matter. And to security matters now in Bronu State, a suicide bomber has blown himself up in a crowded market in Amarwa village near Medugri, the Bronu State capital, killing at least six people and injuring 13 others. The incident comes days after a failed Boko Haram attack on Christmas Day in Medugri. Eyewitnesses say the bomber went to a shop holding a black plastic bag around 11.30 a.m., pretending to be a grain seller before setting off the explosive. Amarawa has suffered several Boko Haram attacks in the past eight years. Honorable Abdul Mumin Jubrin is lamenting his suspension by the House of Representatives, saying his case has dragged too long in the court. The lawmaker, who spoke with journalists after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja, compared his case with Senator Ali Undume, whose matter was disposed of within two months. Mr. Jubrin was suspended from the House for 180 legislative days for accusing the House leadership of padding the 2016 budget. My constraints have been suspended for 16 months, so it's only normal that uh, people will uh, continue to uh, talk and ask questions uh, where we're not uh, back, especially uh, on, the, uh, on the aspect of uh, the court uh, case that has been uh, hanging for about 16 months. Uh, in the court. So I think these are some of the issues why people are raising some uh, issues in the public glare. Interesting thing about uh, the situation, the same case, similar case, uh, identical uh, case, his was dispensed with within uh, two months and uh, mine is still uh, uh, hanging uh, in the court system. So, but again, I know that uh, the Nigerian judiciary, they just, so I'm pretty sure that uh, soonest we'll be able to uh, get uh, judgment and my constituency will uh, get back to the house. Let's move over to Abuja studios now where Ibrahim Adra is standing by. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Melinda. Many thanks indeed. Now, two years after Nigeria launched the World Bank assisted Save One Million Lives program in 2015, the national program manager says he is disappointed at the way some states have responded. The scheme is aimed at reducing maternal and child mortality through improved primary health care system. The 2016 Maternal and Child Health report by the World Health Organization reveals that Nigeria has the third highest infant mortality rate in the world after India and Pakistan. According to that report, of the estimated 15,000 children who died globally before their fifth birthday, India contributed 24 percent, Pakistan 10 percent, while Nigeria contributed 9 percent. 
In 2015, the federal government launched a World Bank assisted program called Save One Million Lives, which was targeted as strengthening primary health care services to reduce maternal and child mortality cases in Nigeria. The 2016 2017 survey report on the state of primary health care facilities, released by the Ministry of Health in May this year, identifies the poor state of primary health care system across the country, as some PHCs do not have basic equipment for treatment. The state of primary health care in Nigeria did not start in 2015 in terms of the deplorable state of some of the primary. It's something that's been there for several decades. The rot has been there. But with this administration, the government made it very clear that it was not acceptable. And because we've raised the conversation, people are paying attention. And we are doing everything possible to ensure that gradually, in the course of the next two years, we're able to try and improve the status of primary health care in Nigeria. 500 million American dollars was secured by the federal government from the World Bank to strengthen the primary health care system in Nigeria. Over 80 percent of this money has been disbursed to the 36 states of the federation through the Saving One Million Lives program. Yet some of the states are yet to make appreciable progress. I am, I'm, I'm equally disappointed in another area in the sense that um, some states have not really keyed in to the extent of um, uh, allocating and taking, uh, making judicious utilization of their funds uh, as it, it is expected. In, in the sense that um, some states actually have resources but uh, are not really targeting areas that they should target. I give an example. For any state to have significant improvement in maternal and newborn and child health in Nigeria, that state must actually focus on primary health care. You know, if states continue to allocate 70 to 80 percent of our resources to tertiary, secondary and tertiary health care systems, certainly I can tell you that they will not achieve any significant improvement in health care. Ten percent of 15,000 global child deaths in 2016 is no doubt a huge national burden for Nigeria. Medical experts argue strongly that there is an urgent need for states to take full ownership of primary health care system and change the narratives once and for all. Now to Benue State, where more operatives have been deployed to communities in the state following threats allegedly issued by herdsmen to residents of Adimakwa in Otupo local council area. Governor Samuel Otum has also asked members of the public to be extra vigilant and help security agencies by supplying them information. He said his administration will not be distracted from fully implementing the anti-grazing bill. Government have put in place adequate machinery and strategy to contain this. Just give us the information. These ones we have had already, we have taken measures that we surmount the challenge and the killings will not take place. But one important thing is that Benue State is united to ensure the implementation of the prohibition of open grazing in Benue State. And that will bring lasting solution. These are little challenges accompanying the implementation, but very soon we shall overcome them. And so I encourage our people not to take laws into their hands, not to go after repressor, but allow government to handle this matter. I think we are better off in that way. Still on security, some suspected kidnappers who allegedly kill an expatriate working with the Longwete industry in Kogi State have been arrested by the police. The arrest follows a raid on the hideout of criminals in the state. The suspects allegedly committed various degrees of crimes, and some of them had been declared wanted by the police. Force Public Relations Officer Jimo Moshud explains that the officers who carried out the operation acted on intelligence, while some of the suspects already confessed to the crimes they are charged for. And that's it from here. We rejoin Melinda in our Lego studios. Good evening. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. As the year 2017 gives way to a new year, the governor of Ogun State, Ibikunu Amosu, is assuring residents that his government will provide better services in 2018. 
The governor is also asking for more support from other arms of government to achieve this set target. He mentioned this after signing the state's 2018 budget into law. Senator Ogun State Governor Ibiko Leamosu signing into law the 2018 appropriation bill codenamed the Budget of Accelerated Development. The poor focus states. Governor Amosu had presented the 345 billion Nara appropriation bill to the State House of Assembly in November, with a total of 223.72 billion Nara earmarked for capital expenditure and 121.69 billion Nara appropriated for recurrent expenditure. We have come to present to Your Excellency uh, the clean copy of the bill. Uh, has been number 25 OG 2017. A bill for a law to authorize the issue and appropriation of the sum of 343 billion 983 million 962,106 naira only from the Consolidated Revenue Fund for the services of the State Government of Nigeria for the financial year ending 31st day of December 2018. With an expected revenue target from both internally generated revenue and the Federation account, Governor Mosu is confident that citizens of the state will experience more dividends of good governance in the coming year. Let me assure you that uh, we will on our part as the executive that have been saddled with the responsibility of executing this budget. We will do that and we want to assure the good people of Ogun State that uh, they will continue to enjoy the benefits of having us in office. All the dividend of democracy we will continue uh, to give it to them. And with this new budget, citizens of the state can only hope for better times ahead as the government promises to build on the good works which has started more than six years ago. A new set of Nigerians, about 157 of them trapped in Libya, have returned home. The returnees were received by officials of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, at the cargo wing of the Muritala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. 54 of them are women, 90 men, and there are about 13 children. Eight of the returnees are pregnant. One is in critical condition. The NEMA Southwest Zona Coordinator, Mr. Sulaiman Yakubu, who received the returnees, assured them that the federal government will provide them with special incentives to begin their life again. When the news at 10 returns, just days to the end of 2017, more states of the Federation present their 2018 budget. That's on Business News. Join us again.